welcome or welcome back to our channel. Here we share our family adventures with you and most recently share our progress on converting a 4x4 ambulance into our family expedition vehicle. Last week, the ambulance made it back to our house and in this episode, we'll show you how we're prepping for the cab over and how we struggled but eventually succeeded in removing those dreaded floor cot fasteners. Come climb in. There we go, there's the cab over. Wow. So the cab over, we're gonna use one and a half by an inch square tube, and we're gonna put it on top of this, which should give us about an inch gap between the cab and the cab over. So where's the tape measure? The roof will extend right here, straight out. So this is gonna be the top of the cab over. There's a kid crying. And then, we're currently at 27 inches, so we're going to lose two inches to our two by two. So we're going to have a 25 inch cab over at the top. Laura is saving the children from imminent death. If you hear them screaming. This afternoon, I cut the front um, out, which is a lot more challenging. Oh my gosh, your kids are loud. Um, I need to go help. Okay, take three. So I've done a rough cut out of the front. Um, so you can see this is clearly not accurate, but we will take the cab over all the way to here. Uh, you can kind of see this rough lawn I, uh, line I've drawn, and that's going to be the bottom of the cab over all the way across. So we're going to have a one inch gap between the cab right here and the bottom of the cab over. So the way it's going to connect, we think anyway, is our edge pieces will rivet uh, where this existing piece is, and we'll have a um, a flat bottom here, of course, and then a round corner. We're going to tie it into the existing C channel, which is currently sitting out the front. That's part of the roof raise. And then our roof will be one and a half inch square stock. Um, I think we're going to do quarter inch um, wall thickness or, or pipe, I don't know what that is, square thickness. And that's going to extend all the way to the front. Um, so that's the beginning of it. We'll start with the framework and from there start sheeting it in. We also have three boxes as you know we've cut out uh, the original box was square and then all the way down but we needed to put a bunk bed here and a kitchen sink here. So we of course cut them out and we've got one more right here. Um, so what we did is we came in, uh, ground them, made sure our, our lines were, our, our edges were straight and then we used a flapper disc to make it nice and smooth. We're going to use a piece of eighth inch aluminum that we have a local, local sheet company folding and adding one inch flanges at the edge. So our piece should sit right here. And as you can see, it's not perfectly straight, but we're going to have a one inch tolerance to make sure we can rivet it on. That way we don't have to do any welding. It's going to be folded and stuck right on. And that's the case for all three cabinets. <laughs> I always forget to turn the video on, so we made a little bit of progress. I'm going to show you what we did. Don't bump your head on the way in. I don't bump my head on the way out. Look at that. Lots of head space. So in the front, we've already cut the front out as you can see. I'm now coming in here. This is going to be the bottom of our cab over. Uh, so it's going to be sitting on this line and we're going to have to put a, an L bracket all the way across. This of course isn't level, so we need to fill that in. So I'm coming in here, cutting this straight across, and then we're going to separate it at this seam right here. I've cut all of these, uh, I don't know what you call those welds, but they welded here. We drilled out or ground out the rivets and they have plug welds, which you need to take care of now. So it's also welded up here at the top. I got a cut here at the bottom. This little piece is going to take a lot of work. All right, we finished one side. The right hand side piece that we cut out was quite a bear. I've kind of learned my lesson now. Um, but yeah, I got this completely out. We had to drill the plug welds, grind all the way through because the metal was both glued and the plug was huge. So yeah, got it out. On to the next side. 
right over here. And again, the goal of this is to make this perfectly level all the way across. Alrighty, I've heard dreaded, dreaded stories about these things in the floor right here. And I'm hoping I can just grind them away, but we'll see. All right, these are very hard to get out. Um, I've ground away the bolt. This mechanism is stuck even without the bolt. This one's loose too. Um, and so I thought, that's strange. And then I went to the back. So I took this off and I thought we were gonna have to insulate the floor, but it turns out there's already two inches of insulation under there. So I don't know if you can, you can see that. Um, but yeah, that that is, that is insulated, and so I'm making the decision, should I tear up the floor, which was my intention, so my, my thought was I was going to pull this rubber up, and then leave everything else, but now that I'm looking at this, I kind of want to pull the whole thing up. This is really, I don't know, this super heavy flooring, lighten the thing up a little bit. This is also really cheap insulation, like it, it's just like the fall apart kind. Um, so I'm sure I can increase the R value. But I don't know if I want that much work. So I'm making a decision, we'll see. I'd love to say I debated it a long time, but 30 seconds later I've made the decision. We're gonna pull the rubber up, see what the floor looks like underneath. And if that allows me to remove these bolts, then pristine, we'll leave it as is. All right, day's done. This is the face of defeat. <laughs> so the urban legend is true. These are the stretcher metal pads. So let me get one here, you can see really nicely. So I cut these out, ground them flat, but these of course are one inch by three inches. And they took about a half hour a piece. These are gargantuan. And the reason I'm cutting them out and not taking them out is these giant Allen wrenches spin if I use an air tool um, or are completely stuck fast and they are attached to a bolt on the underside of the chassis which I can't reach with the tool that I own and I can't imagine the tool that could reach it. So here I am, <laughs> the dumbest method possible, I grind around the outside and then I cut vertical stripes on the corners. So, yeah, it's not hot anymore. So that probably was sitting here. So I cut underneath it, cut it off, cut underneath it, cut it off, cut underneath it, cut it off, constantly, because my disc, I have a four inch disc, if I have a larger one that might be a little faster, um, but I, I can't get under here flush. So anyway, um, I went through three discs on this and I ran out. So I'm gonna go buy 10 more, 20 more tomorrow. Hi. So uh, I just wanna say I've got a pretty cool wife. Um, I get to go paramotoring on really calm days. And so today I'm gonna go escape and jump into the sky. Here we go. doing some uh, decal removal and because we're painting this with Raptor liner um, I'm not terribly worried about scratching the existing coat so I'm using a 
um, straight as razor blade and it, it catches pretty well. Oop, let me push that back out. And so this has been working pretty well. It does cause a little bit of damage to the paint and the metal underneath, but again, we're gonna be prepping the whole thing and using Raptor liner, which comes on a little bit bumpy and we don't have to have quite as clean uh, surface prep. It's also very satisfying. So we tried a heat gun and a putty knife, and that worked pretty decently. Definitely didn't do as much damage with the plastic, but the straight edge is faster, it's cleaner. I don't have as much of a mess on the ground. So this is my, my favorite so far. I have all of the stickers off, except for the cab. It's off on the rear. Finish the right hand side. Oops, I missed Ultra Medic. Let's get rid of that. There, gone. What can crabs do? They can't go front or go backwards because they only go this side, this side. Oh, okay, so it's like you're sitting on a crab right now? Yep. Oh, how do they go forward? They don't. Mm. Oh, they probably turn sideways, don't they? Yep. But they can go sideways and then they can go the other sideways and we can go. But you can't go front or go backwards or you can't get food. Hmm.